<laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Now this this brother Nam is a little different, it wasn't, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, this this brother is a, is a little different prophet. And uh, he he didn't allow his uh, his personality to get in the way of his assignment. Yeah. I mean after you know, after Hosea and Joel and and uh, Jonah, uh, it's kind of it's kind of shocking to get a guy that's quiet <laughs> going about going about God's business, isn't it? But this, what does his uh, his account of things say to you? Uh, what kind of a book does it appear to be to you? Yeah, you can run, but you can't hide. All right, yeah. all right, mm -hmm. all right. All right. Like no. God's definitely in control. Yeah, yeah. 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 God give you chances, but but uh, they obviously didn't. Adhere to what they had initially adhered to. Yeah. So. And, and, and I think it also talks about the fact not only will God provide, uh, do judgment on you for your evil ways, but He will also save you. Indeed, Ooh. indeed. Revenge is mine. What's that? Revenge is mine, says the Lord. Says the Lord. That's right. Yeah. And and you know it, it, it's a it's sort of a book of prediction, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also <clears throat> A book of celebration, isn't it? Don't you know Jonah was someplace <laughs> celebrating? <laughs> right? Yeah. I guess everybody yes. else <laughs> but Nineveh was celebrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and and, uh, and you know the question that came up last week was, uh, you know, what what happened to to the Ninevites? You know, did, uh, did were they really committed? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, in all likelihood, some of them were. <laughs> you know, because just like in our world today, right? Yeah. Some of us ain't gonna get in. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I saw it from a but not in this room, of course. I saw it from the perspective also, because we're talking about around one hundred years later. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you see the fact that when you aren't taught what the history is, uh, that's possible. I don't know what, it, because it doesn't say that. But you tend to revert back to where you were. And this is, they repented, but they went back to idolatry, and that's the, that's the issue. Yeah, yeah. And, and it looks like they went back in a serious kind of way, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Because, you know, history books, it may not be here in, in Scripture as we read it, but the history books show that that the Assyrians were some absolutely vicious people. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the other things that picked up here also is the fact it reminds me of the Titanic. Mm -hmm. Titanic was invincible. It, it wasn't going to sink. Mm -hmm. They had their walls. They had the, what, what's that thing that... Uh, that that's deep before you get to have water running in. Mm -hmm. What is it? Moats. 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 They had the moat, so they weren't worried. Mm -hmm. Everything was good. Mm -hmm. uh, but we see. Yeah. That, you look at the leadership of Syrians today, and it ain't that much different. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and uh, if if you look at the fact that the at what they were facing. It's a clear indication to us that, as it relates to God, that He'll let you run for a while, mm -hmm. uh, but He's always got a finish line. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a place where you're going to end the course, mm -hmm. you're going down. and you you got you got to answer for it, right? Mm -hmm. And in the case of of the Ninevites, just just to you know really kind of have us lay out the land. They had gotten to a point to where God said, there is no opportunity for repentance. Now, why, how would he get to that stage? This forgiving God, who is now saying, no repentance. Well, with, with Jonah, they had the opportunity to see the ways and, mm -hmm. and uh, to repent. And, um, and they, they did, but they still went back to 
what they were really doing. You know, wrong, it's out of control, telling, almost like saying, you know, look, you don't know what you're talking about, this is what we do. Yeah. And, um, so he's like, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 I, and I think that that goes along with the fact that when you come to a point that you put yourself above God, uh, and I'm going to do it my way, and your heart, because God's looking at your heart, and you have no intention of changing, yeah. He's going to bring you down. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, 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 and you can remember in Jonah, when he sent him in, uh, it was not with a decree of destruction. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, the Lord, he relented in his anger uh, early on. Yeah. But in this case, it was, uh, it was sent to them in the form of, of an order. Mm -hmm. The author said that, uh, that their destruction had been decreed, described, and deserved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then God, mm -hmm. and then the Lord made that statement, I'm against you, mm -hmm. which meant you were hopeless. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's all, it's all. And in the case of, uh, in the case of Nam, it was a, uh, it was a different kind of situation because God didn't want to put him in peril, did he? So unlike Jonah, who he said, go there, what did he say to, to Nam? I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was a book or a letter that he sent to him, right? He, he never really went to them. So that ought to tell you that uh, they were bad. <laughs> that this was <laughs> there's an upset God out there. Right? The name comfort. What what does that suggest? Peace and tranquility. Okay. No, it's right. not gonna. You're not gonna have any more anguish. It's gonna. It's over. Yeah. You know, it's calm now. Yeah. And now, now he's a prophet to the to the Jews, right? Mm -hmm. Who've been under intense uh, suppression, and so what are they looking for? <laughs> They're looking for comfort, right? And so what we find in, in, in the case of Nam is that he is being presented as sort of the embodiment of God's promises of comfort. Comfort and deliverance. What are you doing her over there? <laughs> We're gonna have to split you two up. That's my lady, this is my lady here, so I'm calling So uh, so he's a he, he's the embodiment of, of God's promise to send comfort and deliverance to the Jews. Some of the reading also said that his, his birthplace is in dispute. The birthplace of Nam. Yeah. Not only disputed, I'm not mm -hmm. really sure. Where he right. Was if. But the bottom line was it didn't matter where he was born. Not didn't sure if where he came from. Not if he was born or not. <laughs> <laughs> I can see. I, I know you are. You are on your trail today. <laughs> I just want him to finish it. I didn't know what he was talking about. I, I said, "Where?" Oh. <laughs> you got a lot of. You got a lot of. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. But that's part of the. Uh, that's part of our uh, ambiance. Dysfunction. Dysfunction. <laughs> So his birthplace is in dispute, yeah. mm -hmm. right? One theory suggests that he came from Capernaum, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Another theory says that uh, that the city Elkosh was really a city in Galilee, and that's questionable too. Mm -hmm. Where that's located? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so southwest Judah. And that's right. Okay. 
you, 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 you got, must be looking at the map. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And the third was that I found was that there's a theory that suggested it was a town in Judah located between Jerusalem and the Gaza. So as you said, it doesn't matter where he's from. His message was very clear. Uh, his contemporaries were Jeremiah. Remember Jeremiah? Right? The weeping prophet. That's a great story. Jeremiah, he's, he had to let it out. He's kind of like me on the golf course. <laughs> I can't keep it in. The Lord bless him. <laughs> uh, other contemporary was Zephaniah, who was uh, known as the prophet of all nations. And the third one was somebody that we're going to be studying here shortly is Habakkuk. Known as the prophet of long and continuous faith. Is, is, is Nam the, uh, the realization of, of Jonah's desire, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. If he could have. If he just did what he's supposed to do, it's going to happen anyhow. Yeah. 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 This is. And the interesting thing is that uh, it was a hundred years or so after Jonah, right? Mm -hmm. And here, here's how perfect God is. It's also a hundred years before the actual destruction of Nineveh. Wow. So, so it isn't like you're going to have to flip by tomorrow, right? He's, he's given them plenty of time. Because he, 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 it's interesting about, uh, and we see this in, in this uh, hymn, that he is he's slow to be to execute the judgment, mm -hmm. but then he's even slow to carry out the punishment. So, so they they had ample time. They were slow to understand. Mm -hmm. One quote said that there is a, there is no remedy for apostasy, but that it yields utter judgment because God requires after apostasy, a new beginning. I mean, that's, that's like it is when, when we, when a person turned their lives around, their life around. I mean, they truly begin to look like a new creation. I mean, you, you watch the attitude of the folks. I remember growing up in, in Dallas, there was a guy that used to run one of the popular nightclubs in the city. And almost it seemed overnight, this guy turned his life around. He took out everything out of that club and turned it into a, a, a barbecue place. Just like that. And, uh, you know, that's been 30-something years ago. And he's, he's been on fire for the Lord since that day. Just like that. And in and, and, and each of our lives, you know, it, it may have been that sudden for you. I ran for a long time. <laughs> and I knew that he was on my trail. But I, but I also know situations where, where things can flip like that, like smoking. You know, I smoked for years. I was packing a half a day. And one day I had a sore throat and never picked up another cigarette. Just like that. Never had a taste after. I mean, that's been a lot of years ago. And 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 the the love of the body causes you to do that, but the love of God ought to make us uh, turn like that. And Nineveh had a chance to do that, didn't they? They had the opportunity. Uh, they had the certainly had the leadership that gave them the example. Because you remember what the king did, right? Mm -hmm. King said, I'm not big enough. There's something out there bigger than me. So yeah. I'm stepping down. Also, uh, one comment said, this is a, uh, a foreshadow what's happening with, uh, with Nineveh uh, of the coming destruction that's expressed 
as we went through Revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The battle in the Valley of, of, uh, of Armageddon. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So for seven, uh, in the seventh century, during this time, not only were the ch children of Israel or the Jews uh, concerned, worried, frightened to death of Assyria, but how about the rest of, <laughs> of that part of the world? Yeah, exactly. Probably everybody, uh, because one of the uh, things that we continue to see through this few chapters mm -hmm. is not that, many is no, not seven <laughs> not not many but the Assyrians will receive the same treatments mm -hmm. that they had you issued mean, out to, to others yeah yeah, yeah. Those around that's right that's right yeah. Yeah. and and yeah. that you know I, I think that to me that goes along we're, we're talking about the uh, Ninevites we're talking about the Assyrians Assyrians are right, Ninevites mm -hmm. um, but we can put that in today's world oh. with us as mm -hmm. a, as a uh, people of the United States, mm -hmm. and I'm sure other other parts of the world too, mm -hmm. is the fact of if we just look at we look like Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what did he do to Sodom and Gomorrah? And we are having the opportunity to change around, mm -hmm. but the fact is we're into ourselves. Uh, so. It's scary, not for me. <laughs> it, it's scary for my brothers and sisters who prefer to ignore God and the Word of God. Uh, so I see us here still being Ninevites. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, and you can, that's the humanness of the prophets that we've been studying, right? Because mm -hmm. we can see ourselves in, in them, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, as we live today, knowing where, what our relationship with God is, it doesn't deny us the opportunity to feel burdened down by the fact that we know so many people that don't get it. Mm -hmm. it you know, it, it's, not a, uh, it's not something we can be comfortable about, right? Because they're being lost. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, when, when the prophets were, most of them, when they were taking the word, from God to the people, they were they were sad about that. I mean, that's why Jeremiah was weeping. <laughs> because they're not bringing good news. <laughs> you know, it's good news to the people that are burdened, but it's not really good news. Go ahead. I might, if I can, just take uh, 30 seconds and read the introduction. <clears throat> Step back from the world, the globe, mm -hmm. And, and just put things in perspective as, as I was reading okay. uh, a couple of days ago. Go right ahead. The stage of history is large, larger than life figures appear on the stage from time to time, swaggering about, brandishing weapons and money, terrorizing and bullying. These figures are not as they suppose themselves to be at the center of the stage, not in fact anywhere near the center but they make a lot of noise and are able to call attention to themselves. They often manage to get a significant number of people watching and even admiring big nations, huge armies, important people. At any given moment, a few superpower nations and their rules dominate the daily news. Sound familiar? <laughs> Every century, a few of these names are left carved on park benches, making rather futile and in retrospect, pitiable attempts at immortality. Mm. The danger is that the noise these pretenders to power make can distract us what is going on quietly at the center of the stage, mm -hmm. the person and action of God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's right now. It, it's yes. definitely. Sure it is. It's right, yeah. right now. That's powerful. Right now. And the hum, is that the correct uh -huh. no. pronunciation, was a quiet man who is like the nature and character of God, mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. quiet. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Wow. And that further adds to the fact that he he kind of felt burdened by mm -hmm. the mission that God had given him. I mean, he didn't uh, try to avoid it, but it was it was not not an easy easy word for him, was it? Amen. Because he cared a lot yeah. about the people 
and about God. What do you think? Everybody agree with that? Amen. The Bible says that God is a jealous God, and that sometimes, uh, particularly when I was younger, was confusing <coughs> because I thought He was perfect and not yeah, jealous. Yeah. Yeah. But there is also a jealous of uh, you worshiping, with jealousy associated with you worshiping <coughs> idol gods and mm -hmm. not giving Him the glory that He is due. Yeah, yeah. And there's a price to pay for that. That's right, that's right. Well, and it's interesting Nineveh. what Ronnie is talking about when I went on to continue to read what the author had written it talks about jealousy and the protection mm -hmm. rather than jealousy and that mean spirited mm -hmm. anger yeah. that you um, want to have what the other person has yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, it became very clear to me at that point and you know you said something earlier about uh, what did uh, Nahum do and I could imagine that he was in constant prayer mm -hmm. the conflict that he had loving God and yeah. Loving the, his people, but seeing and understanding through God's word what what the inevitability was going to be of those people, and yeah. so you know he, he did what God tells us to do, and you go out there and you make disciples, and you pray for people, and you pray for the lost, and you reach out to the lost, and <clears throat> you know if you don't hear that message in all of this, then hey, yeah. why read read the Bible at all? That's right. That's this right. was very clear to me. That's right. That's right. And, and, and the message he was delivering as a word from God is, is so expressive that it's, a, it's as if he didn't just hear the word, he saw something. You know? I mean, if, let, why don't somebody read uh, verses 1 through 8 of none? This message, is that where we are? Concerning. Mm -hmm. Nedabah came as a vision to, is it Nahum? Uh, Nahum, 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 Nahum. Mm -hmm. who live in El Elkosh, the Lord's anger against Nedabah. The Lord is a jealous God, filled with vengeance and wrath. He takes revenge on all who oppose him and continues to rage against his enemies. The Lord is slow to get angry, but his power is great, and he never lets the guilty go unpunished. He displays his power in the whirlwind and the storm. The billowing clouds are the dust beneath his feet. At his command, the oceans dry up and the rivers disappear. The lush pastures of Bashan and Carmel fade and the great forests of Lebanon wither. In his presence, the mountains quake and the hills melt away. The earth trembles and its people are destroyed. Who can stand before his fierce anger? Who can survive his burning fury? His rage blazes forth like fire, and the mountains crumble to dust in his presence. One through six. Uh, through eight. Hmm? Through eight. eight. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. He is close to those who trust in him. But he will sweep away his enemies in an overwhelming flood. He will pursue his foes into the darkness of night. <clears throat> That's scary. No. So, so why do you think Nam would put forth the image of God first? So they would know what God is. They would know what's coming. Yeah. 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 Who he is. Who he is. And yeah. how fierce he can be. Yeah. And yeah. how. And how powerful he is. And how powerful. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> what I'm seeing is that this is really a vision that Nam is perceiving, and and the fact that that vision then had to come from God. That's that's the emphasis uh, on uh, that. That's the way that he knows that he's getting a, mm -hmm. the right message. Mm -hmm. Is the focus on God in okay. It's a uh, it's a clear picture to the folks that are reading it. I mean, because he's written this thing beautifully, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, of, of perhaps what they missed, you, you, you know, a, a reminder, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you know, do you ever get a Whiff of smell of something or feel 
the season that reminds you of, of a period that you've forgotten? Oh, yeah. Flashbacks. 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 Yeah. Sometimes it's not just in the smell. You know, mm -hmm. I, I see a color or, you know, that's my learning modality, but I see something that sparks that um, uh, memory that yeah. you suggested or something, and it, you know, becomes very evident to me that um, this is God talking yeah, to yeah. me in another way. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's what reminds you of the power of God mm -hmm. and God. He's, he's ruler of all things, not yeah. just those that believe in yeah. him, but those that don't believe in right. as that's well. Right. So that's right. That's right. So it's all he is. Mm -hmm. Even in music. Mm -hmm. yeah. In music. Yeah. You know, even sometimes in the gospel, gospel choir we sing. And you know, the, 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 the piano, not the, the, what am I called? The band, I guess I call it the band. <laughs> no. Musicians. The musicians. <laughs> sometimes there's a little something in there yeah. that we heard at the club. <laughs> <laughs> Also, when you talk about the mountains and the sea, yeah. these are things that people could recognize. Yeah. It's not, you know, you know make believe things. Yeah. These are real, and everybody right. was familiar with these. That's things. right, that's right. And they represent permanence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You see a mountain, and you don't mm -hmm. think it can go away, mm -hmm. yeah. but he speaks of it crumbling, and he speaks of them yelling at the sea, and the sea dries up. And you know, you, you withstand an earthquake or a typhoon or I guess they call hurricanes here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so what you get wrapped up in is the commentary by Wolf Blitzer or somebody who's talking about what it is and how it is and the strength of it and how much flood it makes and things like that. But that type of power can only come from one source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and, and sometimes it's like an ABI uh, when they um, ran the conference said, Draw a picture of what you imagine God or heaven is like. Mm -hmm. And you know, you got all kinds of pictures on this. <laughs> you can't imagine it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you could yeah. put down, I, I drew clouds and sunshine and rays and stuff like that, you know, and tranquility and like that. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's all I could come up with in, in the two or three minutes that he gave us to do it. And, but uh, when you really start to imagine it, and you kind of have to go back to what you read. Not kind of, I mean, you have to go back to what you read. Yeah. Because he described it very well. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. revelations or uh, some other chapter. That's right, that's right. So, so in. In this laying out of the power, the presence, and the uh, the love of God in this description, it, it's it's sort of like the those flashbacks you talked about. Sometimes when you flash back, you can even feel the feeling you had back then. Right? And so there may be doesn't say this in here, but I'm just using my sanctified imagination. There may have been some folks still around. And we have to assume that they were, who remembered, or, or were given vivid images of what occurred back then, so that they could either, in the case of the ones who, who were still connected to, in a relationship with God, could keep on running, because this powerful presence that humbled your king is still strong. <laughs> And for those that, that were just simply lost completely, they got a good image of what was in store for them right? in this picture. Mm. Yeah. Would you say so? Yeah. You know, so, I, I, I tell you one of the uh, mind-boggling uh, things was uh, 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 verse 3, uh -huh. where it mm -hmm. talks about in the whirlwind and in the storms and the clouds of the dust of his feet. Mm -hmm which uh, signifies that sometimes, I didn't say all times, because I don't know, what, what was the name of the storm down in New Orleans? Katrina. 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 
I don't know whether Katrina was a judgment, all right? Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> there are times there are there, there there are times that he has used the storms and so forth as judgment. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I don't know when that occurs, but it's there. It happened in the last book we studied. Right? Yeah. And in verse eight, <laughs> but with an old flowing flood, he will make the other ends of its place. Mm -hmm. That's one of the predictions of Nahum, uh, that he's telling them that they will be destroyed by water. Flood will be involved mm -hmm. with their destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, because That's it, good. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it ended up where the uh, Tigris mm -hmm. overflowed that's right. and knocked down those great walls. Right. You're jumping ahead a little yeah. bit, but that's right. Okay. That's right. So, so what what were the characteristics of God shown in this passage, in, in, in this hymn? What, was, what were the characteristics of God? Jealous? Vengeance. Definitely jealous. Vengeance? Slow to anger. Slow to anger. Powerful. Powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very much so. And loving. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this vengeance, you know, you, you'd automatically think of it in a negative sense, right? Mm -hmm. You know, humanly, vengeful, you know, that's not what it is. He's an avenger, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Big difference, isn't it? Yeah, and, and sometimes that's what the non-believer would like for you to believe that he's a jealous, mm -hmm. destructive mm -hmm. God. How can this, mm -hmm. this loving God mm -hmm. be? Be this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a different connotation. That's right. That's right. What scripture is really saying. That's that's exactly right. Because in each one of them, there's a there's a righteous way to do it, and there's a sinful way to do yeah. it. Let's take take the thing, take jealousy. Mm -hmm. what, what is the righteous way of dealing with that? I mean, God's a reflection of it, right? Mm -hmm. To protect, and yeah. to cherish. Yeah. 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 You know, protect, well, but, you. Uh, protect right. our way. Families mm -hmm. and brothers and sisters, other brothers and sisters mm -hmm. as, as well, in a loving manner. Because uh, we don't want any hurt, harm mm -hmm. to come to them. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So what about what about a sinful way of looking at jealousy? Envious. Right. Envious. Get rid of them. Yeah. Haters. <laughs> Spirited. Huh? Mean spirited? Congress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. 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 hey, the truth is a lie. That's right. It's, <laughs> it's on your heart, you may as well say it. <laughs> so so uh, I think the author pointed out that God's jealousy is really love and action. And in and, and, and relationships that we have, that's, uh, it operates that same way. You know, I'm jealous of my kids, mm -hmm. my wife, mm -hmm. you know, my fat, my brothers and sisters and cousins. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, when we see them going down the wrong path, we, we, okay. we jealously guard them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try. Try to, yes, yeah. 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 So when we're when we're operating in righteous jealousy, we, we're really being aggressive in, as you've already said, protecting and keeping safe our own, right? Mm -hmm. What does slow to anger mean then? Patience. Mm -hmm. Patience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take time to think about it. You don't lose your temper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and, and, <laughs> What's that, bro? Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, right President away. Obama, he doesn't show it. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's patient. <laughs> and, and, and I think, I, I think, <clears throat> I think when I look at when I look at God, um, such a patient, long suffering, toleration. Uh, as opposed to us, mm -hmm. get rid of them right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, 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 you know, I also, see, I can use that analogy 
and looking at when he will come. Mm. I don't know when he's going to come. All right. But in terms of. You do, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going there. <laughs> but in terms of trying to allow people to come, come to him. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, and it's our job, our responsibility to do that ministering to in and everybody because we don't, we literally don't know who's saved and who's not saved. Uh, and he wants everybody saved with the understanding that we know that everybody's not going to be saved. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing when we are dealing with people. It's a case of being compassionate to them, being loving to them, but making sure that you are sharing the word yeah, yeah. Uh, with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When do you know to avoid that person? When, when, uh, when, when you have that feeling that God's telling you that it's not God asking you to go to them, you asking yourself to go to them, okay. back up. Uh, yeah, I, and I have I, I, I had those feelings, and I, I would think that others do too. I didn't say you do. But, uh, <laughs> now I do. <laughs> but but you know you, you I I would think that all of us we have that that time when we are the one who's going to go and say, yeah, there ain't nothing about God asking it's us. It's all about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God yeah. has that's good. Huh? God has expectations of you, and you realize the work that you must do. And God also, uh, as the author points out, I believe, says that uh, that He doesn't uh, get angry at you without, first of all, giving you a warning. Right? Yes. Give you a warning. Man doesn't do that. <laughs> well, parents, yeah, yeah, they'll give you a warning or an explanation after As, the fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ever heard the expression? Shoot now. Ask <laughs> <laughs> questions. Ask questions later. Ask questions later. I mean, we're living at a time when that's happening, right? I mean, what happened a week ago? You know, they made decisions. And they're they're answering questions now. <laughs> you 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 have to be in the, in the case of a righteous God. Uh, you don't get to judgment without fully understanding on the front end uh, the reason why he he's angry. You can be led into a false sense of security. Indeed, isn't that where Nineveh is? You know, yeah, and so I, I did something, and there was no immediate payment for it. Yeah, so I'm safe. So, but hold on. No obvious one. Mm -hmm. no, obvious. Yeah, no obvious one. Yeah. 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 But he tells us, too, you know, all things come to light. You might think you get away, mm -hmm. <laughs> but there is a price to pay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I like no bad deed goes unpunished. Right? I like the author's comment that um, because God is so powerful, if he weren't slow to anger, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be dogs. Oh, <laughs> we'd be all of us. All of us. I, I, yeah, I say all the time, boy, if I was God, <laughs> you'd be serious. <laughs> yes, sir. Be serious. They also point out that it was clear that he wasn't going to crush Nineveh until he, until he had first sent Jonah. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of examples of it. Mm -hmm. How does he warn us about impending issues or problems that we, that we could face? Mm -hmm. Speak for my research, but he warns us through sickness, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dreams. You ain't all that. <laughs> Do dream. Uh, other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Warns us through the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't get caught up in the, the theatrics because the man had given you the word. And uh, if you hung up on theatrics and missed the word, you're in trouble. <clears throat> 
because he's warning us through through the preacher, right? Warns us through the consequences of life. Whether it, there are consequences affecting us directly or what we see. Do you have to be entertained to be warned? Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. That's a good question. Mm. Profound, brother. <laughs> 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 That's good. So can we, uh, yes, sir. we should spend some time right at this point about Joel Osteen, because we can hear a lot about him okay. in Sunday school and, and places like that. And he is entertaining, but, but he also has a message. Mm -hmm. All right? And there's all kinds of folks that will bring that message. Right? There's a guy in prison who's done all kinds of atrocious things, and he got the word from somewhere, and he's willing to share it. But I've heard an awful lot of negative things said about Joel, who is another way of getting that message. Mm -hmm. Just another way, just another method, just another person who brings the word in his fashion. Yeah. Now, some of us have outgrown that methodology, and you have to move on to the next level as you grow. You look back at Joel and say that, yeah, I remember that back then. But then you're looking forward because you're more clear on that subject now. And you become a type of, we call the word, we use the word expert, hmm. a more expert, and, and because of what you know now, because you've grown beyond wherever you were. And some of us are, and some of us kind of look back and look down <laughs> at that person who's in it's prison. It's or, called wisdom. Yeah, I like that word. I don't, know, I don't know whether you've heard the Reverend Black, I think he is, mm -hmm. who is the Chap Senate chaplain. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The words yeah. that right. he says That's every right. single day, mm -hmm. right. and he is missing no words. That's right. mm -hmm. He's That's telling right. that right. wherever it's Senate or Congress or all of them, Senate, Senate, oh, all yeah. what is going on? Yeah. And it, it get we can't say worse, but it gets better <laughs> every <laughs> single better. day. More better. More <laughs> can't wait to hear what he's yeah. going to say yeah. the next day. Yeah. Yeah. It's like and, his uh, purpose to be there. That's right. He is remarkable, and I know God is giving him this. Oh, gosh, yes. oh, yeah. Every yeah, I, day. I think it's godly measured <laughs> it you know, where he has uh, prayerfully selected yes. these words yes. and then these words are what he sends forward yes. to those of us who can hear his right. hear God's words. Yes. And that yes. makes it even more He's powerful. Amazed. Thusly, I'm entertained by that. <laughs> Whatever. See, I wrestle with the definition of entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, because it implies negativity, but it doesn't yeah. have to be. Yeah. And I go back to Joel Osteen but, and others like that. If you watch him, he never looks up. That's he right. He has yeah. his head bowed the yeah. entire Oh, he's powerful. He's yeah. powerful. He's not reading. And the he's guts to do it. Mm -hmm. and, the guts uh, to do it. He, I would yeah. love to yeah. hear him just preach a whole man. They said yeah. he is unbelievable. Yeah. He is. I think he's preaching. Have you heard him? Oh, yeah. I've heard him, too. I thought he yeah. preached. Yeah. He's, he's a military man. Here? Yeah. No. 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 I forget where I saw him. Yeah. Yeah, he's been asked. Here? No. Well, we talk. people talked about having him. So He's powerful. But what? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I think it's important about Reverend Black is that uh, he had the moral courage to that's stand right. up there and say that. Yes, that's true. Right. And that's yes. where he so took a lot. A lot of people do that. I mean, you can't quit the job or what mm -hmm. you say. But no, he says, what do you think he should right. say? He says, 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 yeah. That's one. He says and, a message from God. That's right. And, and that's, what, that's what we need. Yes. Right. A lot of messages. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we need is somebody bold enough. Yeah. To stand forward and take the arrows and slings. And he's sharp. He has bow tie. Oh, yes. <laughs> and he's got the credentials to feel yes, comfortable yes. in himself. God's the credential. Yes. Huh? God's yes. the point. Indeed. He's been there. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. So, 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 there's, so God is speaking to yes. us mm -hmm. yeah. through people like the chaplain. Yes. But how many people listen? That's I mean, yeah. well, I I, I, there's two in this room. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you're getting the message. That's right, that's right. Well, and the fact that the news media has yeah. picked it up and you hear yeah, right. little excerpts, yeah. mm -hmm. the most important excerpts are yeah. reported over and over again. That's right. And that was, what, a few days ago, and you mm -hmm. still hear it. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I repost his stuff on yeah. Facebook and uh, other places. Those. Because he, he is speaking the truth. But what that says, what it could be saying, All right. is that uh, God speaks to each and every one of us such that we 
understand what he's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes to get mm -hmm. your attention. That's right. He knows what that is. It That's could right. be the littlest thing yes. yeah. that, oh, you know, you know God's in that. He's, he's talking mm -hmm. to me. He's talking not to you. Mm -hmm. He's talking to me based on that happening. Mm -hmm. And there's something that you know, needs to be done. I yeah. Need to you know, change. I gotta. I gotta pay attention to mm -hmm. this. God has a way of doing that for each and every person, each mm -hmm. and every you know, animal right. on this earth. Okay. Because you can tell that I mean, the That's animals, right. the ears pop mm -hmm. up. Yeah. 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 He, 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 he knows. Yeah. 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 So what is this saying about God is good? How how is that ex being expressed? He's a good God. How is he good? Well, he created us in the first place. Well, he loves and us. He loves, he us. loves us. In his own us. image. Yeah. And the fact that he, yeah. he punishes that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's love. That's right. Okay. And me, he meets all, he meets all, all, of, all of our needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not want, but needs. And that he takes the time to tell you what he gives you favor. You're doing like wrong. He give you an opportunity mm -hmm. to turn around. Yeah. That's, it. that's the only way to describe that is love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he never leaves us or forsakes us. He's right. always yes. there, regardless. That's right. Even yeah. when we do yeah. wrong, he still loves us. So, so he's good in his person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That dude in his being will come. Yeah. Anybody who seeks him out. Yeah. Yeah. And he's good uh, by himself. He doesn't require. Any help. Mm -hmm. He's good eternally. His goodness ne never changes. And he's good in all of his divine persons. Good God. Good. Is that the, uh oh, <laughs> seven o'clock. <laughs> yeah. One quote. Beyond, that's beyond good, but we need that. <laughs> We need another word. You know what I mean? You know what he does? It's just... Beyond good. Just, yes, it's beyond. It's, it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. Awesome. When, when I realized now that before, when I didn't realize that he was protecting me and guiding me the steps that was going to, when I didn't get to give him credit, mm -hmm. that's just, uh, man, how you do that? Yeah. You know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. But that was, a, that was a wonderful message for the people of Nineveh, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Verse 7 where he says... The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. Mm -hmm. yes. That's powerful, isn't it? Yes. So when God spoke, uh, is speaking to Nineveh, King Sennacherib, mm -hmm. Sennacherib, whatever you want to say it, was planning a campaign against uh, Judah and all of the other countries that are, that are around, that were around her. And, and God's speech to Nineveh is in verses 9 through 11. Somebody read that. His address to Nineveh. Whatever they plot against the Lord, he will bring to an end. Trouble will not come a second time. They will be entangled among thorns and drink from their wine. They will be consumed like dirty stubble. From you, O Nineveh, has one come forth who plots evil against the Lord and counsels the wickedness. So, so the leadership of being told directly, you, you, you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> don't even think about it. <laughs> don't even think about it. <laughs> and, 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 and in case you didn't get it, let me address the leader, the king. Somebody read 12 through 14. Thus say the Lord, though they are at full strength and likewise many, even so they will be cut off and pass away. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no longer. So now I will break his yoke bar from upon you, and I will tear off your shackles. Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, the Lord has issued a command concerning you. Your name will no longer be perpetuated. I will cut off idol and image from the house of your gods. 
I will prepare your grave, for you are contemptible. Wow, clear to me. <laughs> so she can clear you. That's all over. I'm telling you. I'm talking about my head. So, I mean, he's telling the king, you know, the people you were suppressing, I'm taking care of them. I got it. I'm taking care of them. I got it. But for you, you, you won't even have any descendants. I mean, he, he's not going to bring the end to Nineveh, but also to to the leadership of That's strong, isn't it? Yeah. That is strong. No more help either. And, and his promises to Israel, no more help. And his promises to Israel were very important. Because they needed to know that the God they served was going to bring them through. And Nam wanted to, uh, wanted to fulfill that. Any other, anything else because we're, we're over time that, that we need to cover? As we move on to the uh, to the next uh, to the next book of study, which is Habakkuk. And closing uh, quote that I, I found was that uh, God punishes nations that follow inhumane policies wow. and brutal practices. Mm. Um, mm. And then he gave you examples. <laughs> <laughs> he gave you very concrete examples. We live in yeah. yeah. Let's let's say it. What, what you got there? Do you have it? Well, no, I was just saying then it gave concrete yeah. examples. Countries that practice genocide. Genocide, mm -hmm. exploiting the poor. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Supporting slavery, that's cutting off the uh, Scary. support yeah. for young babies that are involved in early childhood. Yeah, and just yeah. On and yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to be constantly in prayer. Mm -hmm. Big time. For a nation and certainly for, uh, for our leaders. Okay? All right, praise the Lord. All minds clear?